Na 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 Alex! Praise the Lord. Amen. I normally have guys that I believe in myself that I do this with, but uh, since we have not prepared this, I grew up in a time when uh, church began without instruments. The only instrument we had was the hands yes. and the voices. Yes. Because, because of that, we want to do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the yeah. Lord. Yeah. The song we're going to sing, it's, uh, it's just saying, Jesus is a mighty God. Jesus is a mighty God. Jesus. Everybody bow before him. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus is a mighty God. Jesus is a mighty God.
we thank God for this great moment. Amen. One of the very famous doctors just walked in, and Violet Anabaka. <laughs> She's a little late, but uh, you know, Anabaka, we love you so much. And I know you have maybe just one. Can you say just something as people sit? Because I want to welcome people now to just... Do you have anything to tell the church, Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. All the time. What Amen. Amen. Mambo sawa sawa. She's shy, she won't even come. <laughs> but uh, I thank God for the new beginnings. This is a great church. I, I, I feel it. Amen. Thank God. Jesus. We're definitely in the right place at the right time. Amen. Amen. A moment that God is just going to minister to us, touch us, and encourage us, lift us. So um, as, as we prepare to welcome the man of God, I'm just going to ask us to stand up and uh, just open our hearts to receive from the Lord what he has in store for us. Thank as we you, break Jesus. bread together, just Thank to you, open Jesus. our hearts Thank because you, you can come in the presence Father, of the Lord and leave the same way you came. But I came today to receive, to hear what my Father has for me. Lord, today I just want to open up my heart to you, Father, that you may speak to me, O oh God, in that voice that I can understand, in that voice that I can understand, oh God, may you speak to our hearts, O oh God, to our inner ears, O oh God, our inner hearts, O oh God, may we be ready to receive you, you see the servant as he ministers to us, O oh God, you see as your mouth we need you this afternoon, You see as your mouth we see in the name of Jesus, O God, we thank you, Holy Spirit, may you guide us, may you correct us, forgive us where we have not been right, we thank you, Lord, we yield to your guidance. We yield yes, to the yes, Holy yes, Spirit. Yes, yes, we yield to you, Holy Lord Spirit. Lord, 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 come Lord, and take over. Come and take over in the name of Jesus. Take over, King of Glory. Take over, take over, take over. 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 My God, how excellent is your name.
and uh, we pray that God uses him mightily to, to speak his oracles to you. Amen. So let us welcome the man. function we are going to Wakefield we have a function and most of us who are going for the function are also here. Why am I saying this? I just wanted us to give the servant of God instead of falling give him 50 and then after that we go to Wakefield where we have a function those who are invited. Is 50 okay? Yes. Can we give him 50? Yes. Is it okay? Yes. Okay thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for more time. <laughs> <laughs> Then Moses said, this is uh, verse 12, Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have found grace in my sight. Uh, now therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your glory, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight, and consider this nation is your people. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, we just want to thank you this morning as we share your word. We pray for the inspiration uh, that is needed, oh God, that we may not just speak out of our own brilliance, our own mind, but we may speak the inspired word of God that is required that the need may be met the power of the living god yes. may flow in this place and so we speak against every spirit of destruction we bring every mind and every yes. ability under the the, the the subject of the holy ghost we pray father that when everything is said and done glory comes back to you and you alone we ask that the angelic entourage will yes. minister unto us in this service in the mighty name of jesus Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say you're looking good. It's good to put a smile on someone's face, eh? Praise the Lord. I want to pick up from a series of teaching that we gave. Uh, a 
while ago, uh, just pick a, a, a junk of it and, and share with us. One thing that I know is that God brought me here for a purpose. Amen. When I heard uh, Dr. Ari, right? That's how you called her mom? Dr. Ari, right? Yeah. When I heard Dr. Ari speaking, I, I knew that I came for a purpose. Yes. For the Bible says nothing is by accident. Amen. Did you know that in the Hebrew words, uh, the word coincidence does not exist? Mm -hmm. So there is nothing that happens by coincidence. Uh, everything is planned and purposed by God. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. And if your heart will be open, like someone said it, if, if we will have an empty vessel this morning, God will fill it up. Yes. I say God will fill it up. Because at a certain point, uh, the enemy has to see what God can do. Uh, because if he does not see, sometimes he plays a lot. Uh, sometimes the power of the living God has to be revealed to the people. We have to see it in order to be able to glorify God. Because at some point, what we are able to do, Satan is also able to do it. You see, God said to Moses, go to Egypt and tell the people to, to come and worship me in the, in the wilderness. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And the Bible says when Moses was there, the only thing that gave him assurance were two things. Uh, two miracles that God had done before the burning bush. Number one, uh, he, 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 he made his staff become a snake. And number two, uh, he put leprosy on his arm and then, feel, and, and then healed it. I'm going to be a little bit fast because I want to minister to some people. So I'm going to take a few minutes and then I'll minister to some people that I feel in my spirit that is important. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And so as Moses stood before Pharaoh, one important thing as Pharaoh was dilly dallying, Moses called Aaron and said, show him what we are able to do. And so Aaron took the staff, threw it on the floor, it became a snake. Uh, it became a snake. Uh, did you know that Moses began to, I mean Pharaoh began to laugh at Moses. Yeah. He laughed at Moses because he said, uh, we can do this too. We can, we can do this. And, and he called all his magicians, the Bible says, he called all of them. And they came, all of them with their staff and they threw them on the floor and they all became snakes. And so Moses, we can also do that. At a certain level of certain point where we do certain things, but Satan can also do that. He can also do that. But there is what we call a power that is beyond any Amen. other power. power. Because the Bible then said, while Moses is looking, I always assumed that Moses was shocked. He probably thought that he was the only one who could make a staff become a snake. But all of a sudden, as Moses is wondering, God, what has happened? You've left me out because I thought I would be so famous by doing this miracle. But all of a sudden, we are many who can do that. As Moses is wondering, the Bible says the snake of Moses began to swallow uh, all the other snakes. There is a power that can swallow every power of Satan. And I came to announce to you this morning that whatever curse, whatever power of the devil that he had released as you were coming, as Mama said, anybody who came, whatever you came with, the power of God is about to swallow it in the name of God. Oh my God, I'm just getting started. I'm just, I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. It's going to swallow every curse and make it into a blessing. Somebody say hallelujah. Lift up your right hand and say hallelujah. Because the power of God will swallow every curse, every negative word, every word that the enemy had said over your life. The power of God will swallow it in the name of Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. It's going to be hot in here, oh my Ooh, God. Thank you, Jesus. It's going to be hot in here. Oh, yes, God is going to swallow you all. Amen. If they told you that you're going to be sick for the rest of your life, the power of God will swallow it all. Yes. The Bible says it is the Lord who turned the curse into a blessing. Amen. It is God who can turn a curse into a blessing. Yes. The book of Nehemiah, the 13th chapter, the Bible says God turned the curse into a blessing. Amen. I declare that every curse, every negative word spoken against you, God is turning it into a blessing in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. Amen. Go to them and say, just believe the word of God. Because God will surprise you this morning. God will shake things about you. God is about to uplift you. God is about to do something that will shock every neighbor around you. My God, my God, I feel like I'm in my office right now. My God, my God. We want to talk about the 
importance of the grace of God in a person's life. Hallelujah. It is important that we, we understand that God's grace is necessary. Mm. It is important. Particularly for a church like this that is building or coming out. Mm. There is necessity for the grace necessity. to be released over yeah. the people. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Moses then said, if I have found grace, show me your glory. Amen. If I have found grace, show me your glory. Yes. Lift up your right hand and say, Lord, let me find grace to you. Too. Amen. Grace is very important. Amen. And we all need it. Amen. The goodness of the grace is that it is for free. Look at your neighbor and say, it's for free. It's for free. Uh, during my few years of ministry, I've seen people look for the anointing. They pray for the anointing. They want more anointing. But you know that the anointing requires a price. Yes. But grace is for free. Amen. And uh, for you to have more anointing, you have to pay the price. Amen. The anointing that I flow under, I have paid the price for it. Amen. But when it comes to grace, it is for free. The book of Romans, the fifth chapter, the 17th verse, the Bible says, And those that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they shall reign in life. So in other words, uh, in terms of reigning in this life or ruling in this life, grace is then necessary. Because you have to receive the abundance of it for you to have dominion over every circumstance and situations yes. that are actually have burdened your life and this. And I believe that grace is coming over you if you can receive it. Somebody say hallelujah. You see, when Moses spoke to God, it was so close to him because Moses heard God speaking to him. We probably have to believe to see the grace manifested, but as far as Moses is concerned, he heard the voice. He heard the voice of God. And so Moses said to the Lord, if I have found grace, show me your glory. My God, Shakra. You see, when Moses said, show me your glory, now let me rewind a little bit and make you understand what he meant. Because a lot of people think glory is limited to the miracles that we see. When Moses said, show me your glory, he had seen ten plagues in Egypt. He had seen water turning into blood. He had seen uh, 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 people being sick from nowhere. He had seen frogs. Are flying and, and coming into the Egypt. He has seen flies all over. He has seen all kinds of miracles as he spoke his word in Egypt. Moses, he had seen the Red Sea parting into two. You see, go and, and check this little water that I saw around. Just consider that water parting into two. Now think about the Red Sea. Moses saw the Red Sea parting into two and Moses crossed through it. It was on a dry land. He crossed to the other side. When he said, show me a glory, Moses had seen manna falling from heaven. Moses had seen water gushing out of the rock. Yes. Water came out by the power of his word. Moses had seen meat falling from the sky. When he said, show me the glory, Moses had seen the water of Mara, which was so bitter, turn and become sweet. He still said, show me your glory. So Moses, what Moses was looking for was something that was being Beyond what some of us may be looking for. Because Moses had seen all kinds of miracles yes. before he said, show me your glory. Lift up your right hand and say, Lord, show me your glory today. Lord, show me your glory today. The Bible said, there shall be a performance to him yes. that believes. You see, you have got to believe for you to see the glory of God. It is important. Moses said, show me your glory. You see, the Bible says in the book of Psalms that Moses knew God's ways. And the people knew God works. You see, for you to see the glory of God, you've got to get to a point where you know the way of God. You have to know the way of God. That's what Moses knew. The people knew the works of God. May God open up your mind and spirit that you may be able to know the ways of God. Your life will become a miraculous life. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you. The grace of God is very important. And every major player in the Bible 
had found something called grace. Every major player found it. Noah found it. Noah found grace before the Lord. Joseph found grace before God. That he became prosperous more than a prime minister. Can you imagine a domestic boy, a slave, who was prospering more than the prime minister? To a point that the prime minister noticed that this boy, he's better than I am. Why? Because Joseph had found grace before the Lord. Before the Lord. Ruth found grace. She found grace before the Lord. A slave woman from a, a strange country and nation. She found grace. She found grace. She found grace. And she represented uh, the mother of Jesus at some point because of the grace of God. Right half the prostitute found grace that she was saved when they took over Jericho. And she was saved because of the grace of God. Every major player in the Bible had found something called grace. Esther was a foreigner in a foreign land. She became the queen. She took over the kingdom because of something called grace. Somebody say, let me find grace today. Can you say it as if you believe in what you are saying? Can you say it as if you know that you are about to find some grace about? I pray the lie, your life will change and turn around because grace has come for many of you didn't even know you're going to be here. It is because God had purpose on this day that you may meet and find grace and your life will never be the same again. I'm going to believe for you today and you shall see the Lord your God. Bob said David found grace before the Lord. I have found David a man after my own heart and I've anointed him. And the man stayed on power for years. My God. John the Baptist when he came on the scene he found something called grace. He found it. He found it. And the Bible says and the baby John waxed great. And he grew. In favor before God and before man. Amen. When Jesus appeared, he had found grace. And the Bible says, and Jesus increased in grace. Amen. The second book of Luke. I mean, Luke, the second chapter, 52. And increased, and he found grace before man and before God. Amen. Grace is important, grace is necessary. And the goodness of it is that it's for free. Amen. All you have to do is just to find it. <laughs> oh, Lord, I give you praise. The book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the 16th verse, and the Bible says, We shall come to the throne of grace with boldness Amen. to obtain mercy. Yes. After we obtain mercy, we then find grace. Amen. <clears throat> Let me say this. The biggest problem that we have in the church is the concept of sin. Sin is the biggest problem to us. Inasmuch as sin is not a problem. <laughs> the reason why sin is not a problem is because the Bible says Jesus Christ died while you were yet a sinner. He took care of it. But it is a problem to us because we are always guilty. When we commit sin, when we do something, we condemn ourselves. We think it is responsible to condemn ourselves, even though the Lord says, I forgive you. You see, when you do something and I tell you you are forgiven, you will still be guilty. You want to do something to pay off your guiltiness. I came to announce to you that Jesus has already paid it off. Amen. So you don't have to be guilty when you come to the house of God. You deserve every possible blessing. Amen. You deserve it. Because Christ died for you. 
while you were a sinner. He died for you. He died for you. If you want to pay off your guiltiness, it means Christ didn't do nothing. His work was useless. You need to uplift what Christ did. He died for you and I. So that today we may stand bold before the Lord and say, I deserve to be blessed. My life cannot be in this tragedy for the rest of my life. I deserve to be happy because Christ died on the cross. He died. He didn't die in vain. He died for a purpose. Yes. He died that I may stand before the Lord. Amen. Worthy of being blessed. Worthy of being uplifted. Worthy of being happy. Worthy of receiving everything that I deserve to receive. Christ didn't die in vain. He died for a purpose. Yes. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Christ died for a purpose. Yes. He died for a purpose. He died for a purpose. He died for a purpose. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I, I'm trying to squeeze some things in here. Uh, and I'm a man under instruction. I, and I love respecting time. Listen to me. A lot of people look for the anointing, which is very good. But I would rather search for the grace of God. I'd rather search for the grace of God. Let me say this, and I mean, this, this is actually for free. I'm not even going to charge you for this. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Elijah, oh, Bishop, Elijah had one portion of the anointing, as we say. Elisha asked for a double portion of Elijah's anointing. But consider this. Elijah, with one portion, the Bible says he was ruptured in a chariot of fire. Mm -hmm. Death could not swallow Elijah. Amen. It could not. <clears throat> Elijah was powerful more than death. Mm -hmm. That death could not swallow him. Mm -hmm. But the shocking thing when I read the Bible is that Elisha with double portion, double portion, sickness killed him. Sickness. Sickness. Urere, as they say it in Shona, in Zimbabwe. Sickness. Sickness. With a double portion of the anointing. But sickness killed him. Elijah with one portion, sickness could not, death could not even swallow him. I began to search the Bible and say, God, what's the problem? What's the issue? The Bible says the grace that was upon Elijah yes. was higher than the grace that was upon Elisha. No wonder when John the Baptist came, he did not come in the spirit of Elisha. He came in the spirit of Elijah. Amen. Who had one portion. Hallelujah. You see, you see, the anointing breaks yokes, isn't it? Yeah. The anointing breaks yokes. Grace destroys mountains. Amen. Because the Bible says, and they shall come to the mountain shouting grace and grace to it. Amen. What are you, O ye great mountain? You shall be made plain. Because you are nothing before Zerubbabel. They bring the mountain down with a shout of grace. Amen. No wonder Christ came Full of grace. Amen. Oh, God. oh God. Imagine we ask for the anointing to break the yoke of sickness. How about if you found the grace of healing? Sickness will never take over. Amen. We want, we want the anointing for promotion. How about if grace comes for promotion? You will enjoy it for the rest of your life. Amen. Picture yourself, Jesus, breaking yokes and looking for a breakthrough. Mm. He never looked for a breakthrough. Do you know why? Because he was full of grace. Because when you are full of grace, there is no demon that will stand before you. Mm. Mountains actually collapse before you. Yes. 
Can you say amen as if you know what you're talking about? Amen. shall be a child. Yes. Ah! Look at the actions, the act of Anna. She was so faithful in church, giving double offering in church. But Mary didn't do nothing. She was just Mary. Huh? Anna did actions. She cries to get a baby, but Mary didn't do nothing. All she did was to find grace. My she didn't do nothing. She doesn't deserve to have Christ as a baby. She didn't do nothing. Amen. The angel says, you have found. Lift up a hand and say, Lord, let me find grace for them. I find grace. Let me tell you the truth. The world, the world is not ruled by people who deserve. Let me not start from our president here. <laughs> but when grace comes over you, even though you don't have all the qualification, you can rule that company. Yes. You see, your amen is still discouraging me, but it's okay. I'll keep, I'll keep, I'll keep pushing. <laughs> Yeah, you can run it. Amen. You, you, can, you, can, you can sit on that chair, on, on that boss that is looking at you, and looking at you with your accent, African accent, you feel like, like this boss is trying to step on me. You can sit on that chair because of the grace of the living God. You can have anything in this country because of the grace of the Lift up a right hand and say, Lord, let me find grace. is about to be released over your life today. Amen. And you will walk out of this place, you just feel something that is around you. You know I have found grace. I don't know where it is, but I, I just found something called grace. Because without the grace of God, I don't care how much you will work. Yes, Lord. I don't care how much you will work. Look at your name and say, life is a cycle. Life is a cycle. Now tell them, listen, listen. Tell them, listen. Tell them, listen, let's preach together. Let's, let's preach together, all right? You preach to the neighbor, I preach to you. Is that okay? Now listen. This is a great congregation. Listen. Listen. Now listen, now listen. Now listen. You guys are good preachers here. I'll start with the wardrobe. When I go into your wardrobe, I'll be shocked to find dresses that look similar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
Even if we take all of them and throw them and take it to a store to buy new dresses, I am sure similar dress will go back to the same one. Because that's what you are. That's what I am, exactly. <laughs> that's a cycle. Life is a cycle. Amen. And that's the reason why when you take a poor person and give him a million dollars, give him a few time, you will find him back into poverty. Yes. Because that's what he is. Yes. Oh, God, we all have certain circles in which we are bound to stay. The only thing that can move you from this paradigm shift, from this cycle to the other cycle, can only be grace. Because even if we gave you all the money, we will find you back where you were. We can give you the, the dream cars that you have. We'll, we'll probably even find them on bricks. Because you could not maintain them. Because that's your cycle. Mm -hmm. that's your cycle. Life is a cycle. Life is a cycle. And many times, many times, even, even, even into our relationships, if you, if you had a girlfriend, a girlfriend when you're young, I understand this generation is a bit higher, but anyway, when you had a girlfriend when you were young, I, I'm speaking to men because there's so many women, so I'm not talking to men. When you, when you have a girlfriend, and then you change the girlfriend, and then you find another girlfriend, your sisters will tell you when they see the new girlfriend by the name of Carol, they'll say, ah, Carol reminds me of Nicole. <laughs> Because oh. that's what you are. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> my, bro my brother has missed. <laughs> and so Ruth, Ruth, the Bible says she was in the field gleaning. She was gleaning. She was enjoying the leftovers. Gleaning. 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 That's all she could, is gleaning. Some of your life is you go to work, you come back home, you sleep, you go to work, you come back home, you sleep, you go to work, you come back home, you sleep. If you don't have any visitor, you won't even know where the smile is because you'll just be frustrated at work and come back home. There must be something different to create a difference in your life. If not, you will be going in the same style. And so Ruth is gleaning. <laughs> then she met the gods. A life change from gleaning to junks of leftovers. Because when she met the gods, the boss told them, who is she? Uh, she's one of the women who came with Naomi. He says, okay, help her out. So they did not now take everything out. They left junks. So she shifted from gleaning to a better life. Hallelujah. The cycle changes. Let me ask you. You want promotion? Yes. What did you do? What did you do for you to get that promotion? You only do the same job every day. If it's filing papers, it's filing papers. Yes. So what do you do to get promotion? If it's your nurse, you're a nurse, you're taking care of the people, you're a nurse taking care of the people. What will you do to deserve promotion? It's the same thing you're doing every day. And so Ruth is now into a different life. Getting junks. I'm about to wind down. Then she met Boaz. She met Boaz from gleaning to a junk to ownership. Mm. She owned the field. Amen. Because there were, let me put it this way, there were interruption in a cycle of the people she met and life changed. Amen. It's only grace that can take you from there to here. 
because you, you, you don't deserve promotion. You can add another certificate to yourself, it's fine, <laughs> but you're going to do the same job. Until there is grace that comes, that you do the same job, but that day, as you are doing the same job, all of a sudden the boss says, who did this? You've been doing it every day. Amen. But the boss doesn't. But that day, because something has happened, the boss all of a sudden, who did this? Oh, Where is that person? We need to bring that person. This person. And as you come forward, people say, yeah, she's always dedicated. Yeah. But really? Wow. Yeah, because I mean, the job she's doing, every, all of a sudden, you become a boss. You have been yeah. promoted. Yeah. Because there is something new that has come over your life. Somebody say, I receive grace today. Come on, say it as if you know what you're talking about. Say, I receive grace. My life is about to change. And so Mordecai had done wonderful things. Nobody said a thing about what Mordecai did. Until, until there was prayer. Until there was prayer. That the king said, ah, give me the books. Give me the books. And they gave him the books. He began to flip through the books. And he went to where? Mordecai was. I said, but, but it looks like Mordecai had done something good. What, what did they do to him? And everybody said, well, nothing. What, what do they do? To him? When something in the realm of the spirit appears, what you were doing as a normal thing becomes special. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. God is about to upgrade somebody in this church. About to upgrade somebody in this church. My God. My God. They, they, they are about to look for, for the books of report. And they, they are about to go back to what you did. That's why Esther knew that even if I take more, that's not my cycle. I will stick to my own. I will stick to my own. I will only take what I was given. Amen. And there was a master, a master that was going very far, and he called his servant and gave them talent according to their ability. That's where you are. So don't fight with others who got five. That's where you are. That's, that's your cycle. Look for grace. You will shift from one. That's your cycle. Oh, Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. God is about to release grace. Amen. I gave a testimony on uh, Friday night, and I'm going to say it here. In my lifetime, I, uh, I have uh, ministered in, in, in quite a few places, particularly in Africa. Uh, I usually say I, I ministered from four people to over 10,000 people. How did I get there? <clears throat> I remember one day I was preaching on a Friday in our service. And um, after I finished, it was an evening service on Friday. Uh, I usually say my pastor was a self-centered person. He wanted all the glory to him. He, he wanted to be, you know, appreciated in him alone. And so all the belt of the leaders we were just there to fulfill something for literally like for him. And so I remember we did this conference, we, we put up this conference, it was tremendous. We did so much work. Uh, we were translating, we were singing, we were ushering, we did all that. Uh, and when the pastor came, he didn't even appreciate us. Now I'm not complaining, I'm just trying to take you to a place. Just to show you what kind of a man he was. But he was a great man. He was a good man. He was a good man. On this particular Friday, when I ministered, my pastor stood on the stage. He took the microphone and he said to me, as I sat in the back, 
He said, this young man is going very far. And I paraphrase him. And he will minister in so many places. Amen. When he said that, Amen. I stood up from my chair. I walked outside. I knelt down. I began to cry. And I Amen. prayed to the Lord. Amen. I said, God, give me humility because today I have received something. of my friends, pastors, I, I have preached more than all of them. Amen. I preached in huge platforms where people like Ashimolo preached too. Wow. Bishop to the person I preached too and I preached there too. Mm -hmm. now, now, the reason why I got there is because my pastor mm -hmm. said Now, the words we speak are not empty words. Amen. They are words of grace. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm about to sit down because I'm running out of time. Hallelujah. They are not empty words. They are not empty words. They are full of power. They are words of grace. Yeah, they are words of grace. You see, you see, Hannah... Hannah was a tremendous woman, as I said earlier on. She gave double portion of the offering. Of, the Bible says she gave double. So if you give $100 here, she will give 200 <laughs> But I usually say, the problem with Hannah is that she could not honor Eli, the priest. Because after the service, Hannah would just walk out and go home. But she noticed that a friend was having babies and she could not produce any. That it kept on tearing apart her heart. That on this day she stood by the door. Can you imagine she stood by the door? She was not even ready to see the pastor. Let me put it in our term. But there was sorrow in her heart. That words could not even come out of her mouth. The Bible said she only moved lips. That the priest came closer to Hannah and said, Hannah, please, are you drunk? Even on a Sunday morning? <laughs> you, 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 you rush to the bar early in the morning. You, you drink alcohol before you come to church. Come on, Hannah, you, you got to cut it off. But Hannah said, listen, listen, it's not wine. There is something that burdens me, that borders me. There is something that the priest, the priest did not even want to know what it was. He said, let it be done according to your prayer. Amen. The Bible says, the Bible says, Hannah went back home, lay down with her husband. I said, life is what? Are we preaching together? I said, life is what? She lay down with her husband just the way she always does. But this time, the Bible says she fell pregnant. Oh, God. Now, I'm going to prophesy over your life and say, as you leave this place and go back to your psycho life, this time, it will not be the same. Something new is about to be introduced in your life. back, she found there was a difference. There were junks that were left. And I said, this time. Someone said, this time. This time. Someone said, this time. This time. Oh, yeah. When you go back this time, things will be changed. Yes. Because there is something new that has come. Yes. Would you stand on your feet? I want to I respect your time. You guys are so busy. You have so many things to do. I don't want to take uh, much of your time. All I want to ask you is to lift your hands and close your eyes. Lift your hands and just close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and I don't want us to scream, but I want us to sing the same song that, that my dear Mercy was singing. Oh, Lord, oh, God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name. That's a song. It means God is excellent in all the earth. It's in all the earth. As we sing, and I want you to see the Lord coming down. And I want you to tap into that grace that God has released here. 
Let's go. Receive that grace, man. Receive that grace. Receive it. Receive it and walk in it. To bring change of cycles. Change of cycles. Moving you from one circle to another one. Receive the grace of the Lord. Oh, Keep praying. Keep praying. Just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. This grace that is being released in this service. This grace that has been released in this grave, in this service, in the name of Jesus. Receive the grace of God. Receive the grace of the living God that will cause some changes.
I break every curse. Yes. I break every curse. Yes. I break every curse. I see some people under there. They, it's, it's not over you, but it's chasing you. I break that cycle in the name of Jesus. I release you from it. I release you from it. Yes. You from it. Yes. I said, if you believe, you shall see the glory of God. I say, I release you from it. Yes. There is a paradigm shift that is taking place in this house. Jesus. There is a shift. That's what God brought you here. There is a shift. Mama, Mama, Shabbat. There is a shift. That's what God. Thank you. I want to sit down, but can I pray with you? Please come quickly. Thank you, Lord. Can I pray with you? Thank you. You can come if you want to, because the Bible says the kingdom of God belongs to those who take it by force. Father, I pray and I release that grace over your woman servant right now in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. That which you are doing, it is a wonderful thing. Yes. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The devil has caused you to miscarry every vision, miscarry a number of things in your life. Now be free. Yes. In Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.